Edgar, cosa stai facendo? Eh, sto ritoccando questa viola. Ah, ti ricordi che dovevamo fare il video? Il video? Oh shit! Sì. E tu poi dopo volevi parlare di? Vernice, dai, vernice, tanto ah, che stai facendo, stai okay. verniciando, ma cosa è verniciato quello? No, questa qui è verniciata ad olio, e però la sto ritoccando, però è una buona cosa, dai. Tu hai già acceso? Sì, sì. Ah sì, ok. Dai che ti filmo sempre. Eh? Ti filmo sempre. Ah, sempre? Sempre, sempre. Che stress. Christian. Hello, hello, back again. Here I am in Cremona. I had to move into another, another room because over there they're working so heavy that I can't even make a video because uh, uh, Min is working on an arching and I have to do here something. And Christian always wants to do some videos, you know, it's, it's just a, a little bit of pain. Now he, he kept caught me that I'm retouching with uh, spirit varnish and since I explained him the difference what is spirit varnish and what is oil varnish and he's going to make his own electric base with I don't know what kind of varnish he's using now he's completely into varnish you know and he wants to know everything so right now I wanted to explain you a, a little bit what I'm doing here and he wants to know the difference so now I'm right now Retouching with spirit varnish. Spirit varnish means it's like all this stuff here around which is like shellac basically and then you put other ingredients inside in order to make it a little bit softer otherwise it's too brittle. You put it on like I'm retouching here with this one and the alcohol is evaporating and the rest remains there so I'm just retouching some tiny scratches it's an instrument of mine from 1993. It's actually here with this white dot that's a, a family owned, a Russ family owned instrument which I borrowed for many years to one of my family members. And now I'm adjusting it so I can bring it up back to Austria. Yeah? And uh, now this instrument actually in 1993 three I varnished already with oil varnish and that's interesting because these are now 30 years later 30 yes 2023 1993 so it's 30 years later and I still remember when I was varnishing this instrument it was deep red it's probably on the camera it seems also uh, kind of artificial red while in nature here it's actually a very charming red and by taking off the fitting and everything you can see underneath the tailpiece how the varnish in the surface is a little bit it's not a crackly it's 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 a, a very interesting surface where you can tell, okay, this is how oil varnish looks like after 30 years. If you wouldn't see that area, the rest would be probably like spirit varnish. And the more the time goes over, uh, passes by, you don't really see a big difference between oil and spirit varnish. So the, the thing that somebody says, yeah, this is oil varnish, is always a little bit uh, dangerous. Pretty early in my violin making career, I discovered that oil varnish has more advantages sound wise and for the instrument and for the quality than compared to it the spirit varnish. Now you would say so then use only oil varnish. Oil varnish is a very fragile and unstable material and it's not so easy if you have a big shop like me and you have other people working on, on instruments to explain somebody else put on a, a layer of let's say red and brown, red brown or whatever because you don't have a big jar like this one with the ready varnish you have to adjust it at the time when you varnish so it becomes a little bit more personal automatically and that's why I use here in my workshop if Marco makes a violin he puts on oil varnish on his master violin if Min makes it she puts it on her own varnish and me mine it's the, the varnish actually is always the one I make in my garden in my backyard 
and uh, you can see the videos and all these kind of things. But when somebody else is using it, the result is automatically a tiny bit different. Of course, they come out of my school and so they have a little bit my line of instruments or how they, they make it. But still, Min is varnishing different than Mark or than me. Yeah? And that is an additional touch of the maker. Yeah? And this is something, the more we go on, the more its individuality is written in big letters. Yeah, big letters. Oh yeah, we write only with big letters here, okay? Um, <laughs> well, that was a good one, huh? Okay, now you can return back to color. Sound-wise, uh, oil varnish is actually a very once it is uh, dried out, it becomes a, a pretty flexible coat layer on top of the surface, which does not create tensions to the wood. While spirit varnish tends to become harder, 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 always harder. Yes, we put some resins inside to make it softer. We put some things inside in order that the brush is brushing better. We put a lot of things inside to slow down the process of, of drying. But on the other side, it becomes only harder and harder. Yeah? So you have on one side the spirit varnish, which for nowadays sound perception Actually, it, it's pretty much in the trend of what people love. They all want it more focused and a little bit stronger and stronger. We tune higher. And the spirit varnish for that kind of, let's say, sound, yes, is more towards the sound we, we are going to. But on the other side, the oil varnish has a bigger range of overtones and is enhancing to vibrate better and freer. And that's my experience. And while I was varnish, varnishing this instrument, for instance, I was varnishing with oil varnish, but I didn't put on the thin coat of, of protein in 1993. I didn't know anything about that by that time. It was much later that I discovered that. Uh, when you put on this layer, this uh, magic uh, coat of protein, to close the, the, the wood in order that the oil varnish doesn't penetrate into the wood. That gives additional a, a, a step of better sound, which is definitely something we are looking for. Yeah? Then on oil varnish, for instance, here where the hand comes, we will make later on a close-up here. Now here you see the close-up and you see how this um, kind of craquelé where the hand is when you play here or even here next to the pack box, some areas are having this because they're exposed to warmer areas of your body while you're playing and then it becomes pretty, I think, very charming. For some people these things are, are not nice. I think it's just awesome. It's just so beautiful. This is time over years and years this has been created. There was not one day that poem there was the craquelé. No, it was just because of being played it turned out to be like this. And that's something I would say super sexy in violin making. That's something what Christian would love to make on his new electric bass here. He's want, he wants to make a slightly antiqued uh, electric bass. Yeah? So this here is also just awesome. I just think that's just nice. And on a spirit varnish, this is a little bit more difficult to obtain. And that's a pretty uh, typical sign of oil varnish, which now when I say it like this, please make a step backside and it could perfectly be that it's a spirit varnish and it makes this all, all fine. But here I think this is with oil varnish very nice. So the reason I put oil varnish, as I explained you already, is that it is freer in sound, a little bit more challenging, underlining your personality as a maker, and in the past for sure there was only oil varnish. Even when I was a kid I can still remember that in the back side of our garage somewhere there were some jars of paint for doors, which was oil varnish. So at that time, so this was not so many years ago, let's say I was a small kid, five, six years old before I went to school, so it's over 50 years ago. 
I'm now 57, damn, yes, okay. And I remember that there were one or two jars of this paint for doors and windows, yeah? So oil varnish wasn't something so far away until not so many years ago, all the paint for everything people were painting outside on the house, on the doors and windows was oil-based varnish, okay? It was just that it's a little bit complicated, it doesn't dry, you need the sun. And so, slower from that period on, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, probably they started to use a solvent based synthetic varnishes, and that um, knocked out all the oil paints which were existing. Yeah? I would just say that I love to have both. Every maker, even if you, they varnish with um, oil varnish, have jars with spirit-based varnish. So since I have Linea Maki and Scala Perfetta instruments, which are not master-made, but three masters together for make these instruments, uh, I see it more as a line, it's not a mass production. We make like, I don't know, uh, maybe 25, 30 uh, Scala Perfetta violins last year. And uh, I don't know, uh, I hope you don't look at my book holding and I don't know if these numbers are pretty correct. But there were some years where we had maybe 60, 70, 80 of these instruments and then uh, now it, it, the market has changed and everybody wants more higher quality instruments. So it's, it's always a little bit changing, but a bigger quantity. A workshop where, where we usually make only master instruments, if they make 15 or 20 instruments in a year, this is already tough production, okay? Um, I know a workshop which you are working really hard and they realize maybe to make 20, 25 instruments, okay, and two people working, that's, that's pretty much uh, what it is, yeah? Um, so with this spirit varnish, it's a, it's a process which you just, yeah, you can put on pretty quick a lot and you don't have to take care too much. Then it dries out, like these instruments here on the back side, they have been sandpapered, they're waiting to get the last layer, the Scala Perfetta, and then it's done, you know? Tiny difference which I wanted to say, certainly a master cello of mine, I varnish with oil varnish, but the bigger the instrument becomes, the less the impact is on the material used, wood and varnish, okay? Uh, sounds strange and uh, it would be nice if I tell you now you need to have that kind of varnish. It's not true, okay? You, you hardly can hear the difference on a cello if it is a spirit or oil varnished. Uh, yeah? That's, that doesn't really influence that much. But on a violin, where everything is really on the limit, it's the Formula One of both string instrument sound, there it makes everything already in a, a difference which you can definitely hear. Yeah? Uh, did I tell you everything? If not, you leave it below here, okay? I didn't make actually a video by now about this where I just tell you straight ahead that I swear on oil varnish, but I love to use as well spirit varnish because it's just also fun sometimes, you know? Thanks for watching. Here I have to continue, otherwise I can't finish today. And uh, Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.